Hey guys, Peter here, and it's been about exactly one year since I bought this 2004 Lamborghini Gallardo, and um, as a follow-up to my one-week and three-month ownership review, it's time to do the one-year ownership review. So this is the video called uh, One Year with a Lamborghini. So I'm going to tell you all about um, my life in the past year, owning this car, driving it, and putting uh, about seven, 8,000 miles on it. Um, I'm going to tell you all about uh, maintenance costs, all the other costs so associated with owning a car like this. And we're also going to get into talking about some of the reactions uh, I get on the street from people, how this car, owning this car is really, has really changed uh, my life in so many ways that I never even expected. So, bear with me here. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with uh, talking about how many miles I've put on the car and how I've been using it over the past year. So like I said, I've put uh, about seven and a half thousand miles on the car. I bought the car with 15,000 miles last year. Uh, and it, at, right now it's at 22,473 miles. So uh, that's, what is that? It's a little over 7,000 miles. And how has the car been? How much has it cost me to run this car? Well, let's talk a little bit about what you guys all ask about, and that is fuel costs. So to be honest, the car is really not that bad on gas mileage. I don't sit here and calculate it down to the mile because this is not a car that I bought to worry about fuel mileage. This is a car I bought to take out when I want to have fun uh, and just rip around and not worry about fuel mileage. I don't do a lot of commuting. You know, I work right from home in my home office. So gas mileage is really not a concern for me at all, especially when buying a Lamborghini. But with that said, this car is really not that bad on gas. Um, I drive a lot with a friend who has a Dodge Viper. Um, you know, that's also a V10. Uh, that thing probably gets about half the gas mileage that this thing gets. We joke around about that all the time. We're usually out driving around for a day. He might have like a quarter of a tank left and I might still be over like three quarters. So it's really not that bad on gas. So how have, how have I been using the car in the past year? Well, first of all, when I bought it last year, I did not drive the car as much as I drive it now. I was really kind of paranoid about taking it places. Um, I was worried about breaking it, worried about someone, you know, hurting it. And I just, you know, didn't really drive it that much. And the reason for that, not only because I was paranoid, um, was because I didn't really know too many other people with uh, exotic cars. I didn't have any other people to cruise around with or anything like that. Since then, in the past year, I've met a lot of people who own supercars, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, you know, Vipers, the new Corvettes, you know, a lot of cool cars, Lotuses, or Lodi, whatever, however you would uh, properly refer to multiple Lotus vehicles. All right, so let's cut to the chase. What have I spent um, on maintaining the car? We talked about fuel, it's really not too bad. I think it costs like 40 something bucks to fill up, and it's not bad, okay? I don't know the exact fuel mileage, don't ask me. Um, but what about like tires and things like that? Tires, brakes, um, you know, natural stuff that wears on a car. Well, to this point, the tires still look pretty damn good. I don't think I'll have to replace them anytime soon. I'll probably get another two or three seasons out of them. I would think, you know, judging by how they look right now. Uh, they're in really good condition. They're, I think they're Michelin Super Sport or Super Cup, I, I can't remember. And they're wearing really, really well. So no issue with tires. What about brakes? Well, the brakes are also wearing really well. Um, I, they must have been pretty much brand new when I got the car because, um, you know, they look like they're brand new. They do throw a lot of brake dust. That's just, you know, a natural thing with the brake pads on these cars or a lot of performance cars. Well, other, other than that, I won't need, be needing to replace the brake pads anytime soon. Probably, you know, two more seasons. So I talked about oil changes um, in my three month review video and it's still the same case. I've changed the oil in this car once, okay? So I changed it once this spring and that was about 5,000 miles ago. Let me say, yeah, about 5,000 miles ago. These cars can actually go up to 7,500 miles between oil changes. 
So I don't technically have to change it again until I hit around 24,000. So I'll probably change it one more time before I put it up for the winter. Now every time I make, uh, do an oil change, uh, the cost is about $150, something like that. I spent about $100 on 12 quarts of full synthetic motor oil, and then I spent about 50 bucks on an oil, a Lamborghini uh, oil filter. I think that's pretty much it, just my time. So about 150 bucks uh, every time I do an oil change. No, not that $1,000 oil change that everyone seems to think you need to pay um, when you have a car like this. So if you don't mind doing the work yourself, and you know you have half a brain, you can get a ton for you know 150 bucks. So aside from tires, brakes, fuel, um, and oil changes, there's really nothing else um, of concern as far as normal wear and tear goes. Um, I have noticed some chipping uh, on the front bumper, and that's just because the car is so low to the ground. You know, you know, it's just naturally going to get rock chips in it from the road and things like that. Um, I have noticed, you know, that happening on the front bumper, and a little bit of, uh, a little bit on the mirrors, but nothing, you know, that I'm too worried about. I do plan on doing the LP570 style front bumper this winter, so all those rock chips will be gone anyways, and then I'm going to get the front bumper clear rod, uh, um, so to protect it from any future rock chips. Again, aside from that, there's really nothing uh, at all that um, has failed or, or anything that is showing any signs of wear um, on the car. Um, there's been no major mechanical failures. Again, I'm saying this hoping that it doesn't happen right now, but there's been no major mechanical failures on the car at all. Everyone says that you're gonna go through a clutch every 5,000 miles. Guess what? That's ridiculous. Now the way you check clutch wear on a Lamborghini Gallardo is uh, you gotta hook it up into uh, you know, special type of software and the computer reads the clutch wear. It's called doing an e-gear snap. Now when I bought the car, the clutch wear was around 89%, pretty much brand new clutch, right? I took the car in for an alignment at the beginning of this season and after driving it for about 2,000 miles um, from last year, the, the clutch had worn I think around two to three percent. So before I put the car for the winter this year, I'm going to take it back to the shop, have my mechanic go, you know, over the car, take another e-gear snap reading, and tell me how much the clutch has worn this year. And then I'll then I can basically uh, figure out how much longer I have before I replace the clutch. I'm going to guess um, at least you know at least twenty thousand miles left on that clutch at least. Um, so we're good for many years to come on the clutch. But when it's time to replace the clutch, you know, the clutch is around 3,500 bucks, depending on where you get it from. And then the labor is probably about the same. So you're looking at probably around seven, $8,000 to get the clutch replaced. If you do it yourself, obviously you'd save on that labor, but you still gotta bring it to a qualified Lamborghini mechanic so that they can recalibrate the clutch with the e-gear system or whatever they need to do there. You can't just slap a clutch on it and go driving. You have to bring it to somebody and have them recalibrate it. So I'll probably save a few dollars there. Now, there's some other things, some common things that usually fail on these cars. And like I said, every time I drive it, it's always in the back of my mind that those things could happen. And I accept that. I no longer worry about it because if you just spend your entire life worrying while you own a car like this, you'll never get to enjoy it. So I've kind of just come to accept the fact, hey, if something goes, I have the money to fix it, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll just call a tow truck and it'll be fixed in a week or two, right? So I don't worry about it like I used to. Um, but there's some common things on these cars that normally go. The e-gear hoses in the back, they deal with a lot of heat back there. That's where the exhaust and the engine is. And they're little rubber hoses and they basically run the, what the hell this guy's doing? They basically run the hydraulic fluid to operate this system right here, the e-gear system. And once they get, um, they get brittle over time and they just end up, you know, breaking when you're going down the road. And um, that's happened to someone that I know who's driving down the road, e-gear pump, let go, and then the car was undrivable, right? I know that could happen, if it happens, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna have to accept that. Another one of the other common things that usually go wrong in these cars, um, aside from the clutch, where the e-gear hoses getting brittle, cracking, and needing to be replaced, 
uh, is the e-gear pump and actuator system. Sometimes those will just just fail. They'll just stop working, and when that happens, you, you, know, you can't drive the car. You can't shift it. This entire e-gear system is, is junk, and you have to buy a new e-gear pump or actuator. Um, again, I know it's something that can happen. If it happens, I'll deal with it. You know, if it happens. Okay, but I've got to tell you something. I did have to buy an expensive part for the car today, and it wasn't the car's fault. It was the stupid gas cap, okay? On these cars, it's a metal or aluminum gas cap. It has Lamborghini engraved on it, and guess what? They're $600 brand new. So I always thought, um, you know, when I take this thing off to put gas in the car, I will, it's always in the back of my mind. Don't leave it at a gas pump. Don't leave it at a gas pump, right? Well, last weekend I did that. I was pumping gas. It was early in the morning, and I was in a hurry. We we're on our way to a car show, and I was basically trying to talk to someone else who was asking about the car. I was eating a, an egg McMuffin because I had skipped out of the house without eating breakfast, and I closed the gas door and forgot to put the gas cap on, and I drove off didn't realize I did that until last night, a week later, when I went to put gas in the car, a week later. And um, obviously that cap is long gone. We asked the, the people at the gas station if, if anyone has turned in a Lamborghini gas cap. They said no. Um, my guess is that someone saw it, put it in their pocket, and now has uh, an expensive Lamborghini souvenir. So I ordered a replacement one today. I was able to get one for 275 bucks. Yes, that I think that's still ridiculously expensive for a gas cap, but um, you know, if that's the least of my worries so far, then I'm happy, right? At least I'm not replacing clutches and, and e-gear hoses. I'd rather buy a $275 gas cap than you know have the car be down for a couple weeks uh, getting you know new e-gear hoses or something. Getting stuck in a traffic jam with uh, an early model Gallardo, and 
one, the car uh, is stuck in traffic like that. I've been stuck on the highway a few times and stuck in city streets on really hot days. And let me tell you, it's torture. The air conditioning system works great for keeping you cool, but the car, you can tell the car just is suffering. Like the clutch will start to get really jumpy. Um, and it, it's just, the car doesn't like it. And um, so, at all costs, try to avoid getting stuck in traffic with one of these cars. It sucks. So let's talk a little bit about the day-to-day, -day, you know, experience living with this car. Um, do I daily drive it every day? No, I don't. Right? Could this car be daily driven every day? You know, someone who works somewhere and they have to commute to work. Could this car be used for that? Absolutely. As long as you have a safe place to park it. The only thing I would worry about is people actually, you know, hitting it or dinging it with their door or keying it or something like that. But as far as practicality, driving it, the car performs great and it really does. And if I had to commute to, to an office or something like that and I had a safe place to park it, um, I would commute. Again, but I work from home, I have my home office, I don't do a lot of driving. The only time that I do drive, I, I get in the car to drive, is when I'm going out to a car show or a car meet or going out to dinner or something like that. So I don't have a commute. If I did have like a physical office building for my business, I would probably drive this there. As much as I could anyways. Now I talked about reactions and things like that in the previous video and that has not changed, okay? But the only thing that has changed as far as reactions goes is my reaction to the other people's reaction. How I deal with people uh, on the highway or at gas stations or driving behind me, I've gotten used to it. When I first got the car the first, you know, first few months, I was really freaked out with people, you know, following me, coming up and talking to me at a gas station, uh, people hanging out the window, trying to take pictures. That really freaked me out. But putting 7,000 miles on this car, owning it for a year, that stuff happens every day. So it's just a day-to-day -day thing. I've gotten used to it. And it doesn't get old. You come to kind of appreciate it. And um, I've come to a point where I really like, I like sharing the car with people as long as they respect it. They don't try to lean on it or touch it or anything like that. Because this, this is my car. I spend a lot of time making sure that it looks good, right? I spend a lot of time cleaning it. I paid a lot of money for it. This is my pride and joy. I don't want some idiot and their kid leaning up against it or touching it. But the reactions are the same. I mean, be driving down the highway, like right now, there's someone actually behind me again, just like when I made my three month review video, there's someone behind me right now and you can actually almost see the expression on their face. They're just kind of in awe, just watching the car. You'll oftentimes see people with their phones up over the steering wheel filming while they're driving or their passenger will be doing it for them. Um, if we're on the highway, you'll oftentimes see people pull up beside you and hang out the, with the, uh, or go like this with their phone out the window recording you. Um, you see pretty much, you name it, I've seen it uh, as far as reactions go. Last night we were in the McDonald's drive through just getting a quick snack because we were hungry and that place turned into like a circus. People revving their engines uh, with big lifted trucks, teenagers with big lifted trucks trying to rev up their engines, get, get our attention. And a um, car full of uh, high school girls driving by and saying, hey, nice car. It's just, it's just something you get used to and it's something you kind of, uh, you kind of learn to appreciate and kind of just, uh, you find the humor in it. That's why I, whenever I park the car at a car show or something, I always have the GoPros running because that's some of the best, uh, that's some of the best footage right there is when you can park this car somewhere and you just put the GoPros on the car and you film the people around the car. So you look on my channel, you'll see a bunch of reaction videos like that. The more I still have to upload. Um, and people often wonder why I put the GoPros on the outside. That's why, it's to get everyone's reaction because it's, it's really cool to see what people uh, say about the car. Now, before we wrap up the video, I wanna talk a little bit about how owning this car has really um, changed other areas of my life. All right, aside from being able to own the car, drive my dream car, experience it, and just be overall happy with it, you know, how else has it changed my life? Well, for starters, um, it has enabled me to meet a lot of like-minded people, okay? Um, I've been able to meet other car guys and girls who have cars like this, whether it's a Lambo, a Mercy, uh, a Ferrari, a Corvette, Dodge Viper, whatever. 
whatever, um, this car has enabled me to meet up with like with other car owners, other exotic car owners. And what I've found is that, you know, everyone usually says, and this road is really bumpy by the way, but everyone's always talking about how stuck up exotic car owners are, or how douchey they are, right? And they think they're better than everybody. Well, in my year, one year experience, living in the world of exotic car ownership, I've experienced the exact opposite. Yes, there's been a few bad apples, people who think they're better than everybody, but it's really like the minority, probably like 1% um, of exotic car owners that I've met have been douchebags. The rest have been really genuine car guys, hardworking people, self-made people who own their own businesses and just enjoy being around other like-minded people. So. Um, that's one of the big ways this car has kind of enhanced my life is meeting a lot of cool people seeing a lot of the cars that I've never seen before I've never saw a Mercy Lago before I've never saw other Gallardo's before I've never seen the Dodge Viper before I've never seen anything until I was able to get this car and meet up with other people with those cars it's also turned into a revenue generator for me I make these YouTube videos um, and you guys watch them in this even though I don't make videos as much as I'd like to because I'm really 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 busy with my main business this is not a full-time gig for me like some people but even though the few videos that I've been able to make you know a couple of months or whatever um, it's turned into a nice little income generator for me where it's kind of worth it to make these videos for you once in a while it actually pays for a lot of things um, so it's actually earning me money so I've kind of turned it into a little side business Or, or something like that, right? That happens all the time, and 
if you don't have thick skin at first, it can kind of, it probably will bother a lot of people. Um, it did kind of bother me a little bit at first, but then I, you know, I, I, I came to kind of understand what was happening. And it's something I kind of find enjoyment in now. So you'll get the random internet haters. That's, you know, that's a given, especially if you do what I do and post videos on YouTube. I'm pretty much asking to be hated on by doing this. But you'll also find people, if you're driving down the highway, you'll find a lot of people, not a lot, but a couple times, like uh, I've had random people flip me off or, 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 or something, say like nice Honda or something like that, just to kind of, just to be a dink. Lamborghini at 
some point. I would like to get an LP640 Murcielago at some point. Um, I'd like to get a Huracan someday. So, you know, there's more Lamborghinis in my future for sure. I cannot imagine my life without a Lamborghini in it. So thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. It really does help out um, the channel and help spread the word. And it lets me know that you're liking this stuff. So it kind of motivates me to make more videos like this. So press the like button if you liked it. Um, and uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other videos. And I'll talk to you soon.